first, and then I'll start with another one. I made a little chart here. My element, number of protons, number of neutrons. I need that in order to solve this. Uh, for boron, a beryllium, that's four and four. For nobelium, 102, and then 260 minus 102. 158. Uh, 50, 51, and 2. Okay. Uh, and then one of these is more likely radioactive than the other. Is that the deal? Okay. Uh, so for this first one, is it more likely stable or radioactive? More likely stable. Uh, however, if you look, I'm going to put a question mark by it because anybody know why I'm going to put a question mark by it? That's not why, but that is true. There's one it, slight issue I have with this one right here. What is it? It's one of our rules here that's on page 135 and 136. But does it match what? Okay, there we go. So I'm going to put a question mark. This might be radioactive. Okay. We're just going to do our best guesses here. How about Nobelium? This is definitely radioactive because a, uh, the protons is bigger than 83. I'm going to put a question mark radioactive there. Uh, how about Nobelium? Oh no, this is a Niobium. I believe. This has a magic number right there, so I'm going to guess stable. Remember, this is all about probabilities. Uh, how about this one here? Why is that? Uh, let's see, what was that, the number? 91? Uh, this is not, oh, you mean 92, but that's 93 up there. So in the periodic table, it's 93 that matches. It's not close enough. So, is there any other rule that would apply? They're both odds. I'm going to go radioactive. Yeah? Uh, for the purpose of the PR table, how close is close if it rounds to the whole number? If it's in the middle, like chlorine, you don't, it's really hard to match because that's 35 one four five. Or anything else that's kind of in the middle, like bismuth, 209. Now, that doesn't mean for sure it's stable, but that's your guess. Because sometimes, I forget, there's a classic example uh, where two isotopes are stable on either side and they round to the middle and that one's not stable. That happens occasionally. How about this one? I would have put stable. I, I would have guessed radioactive because well, first one is tritium. Yeah, knew that from other knowledge. That's a stable. But there's another reason I would probably put radioactive. Uh, protons don't equal neutrons. So usually that's the first thing I'm going to go with. Pro do protons equal neutrons if it's 10 or less, or neon or smaller? Okay. Then. I'm going to ask myself, okay, if it does equal protons and neutrons like beryllium, does it match the periodic table? Uh, and beryllium really doesn't, so that's why I had to put a question mark there. Yeah? Which one of the rules are reversible? Uh, they're all hard to reverse. So the first one, for example, if it's greater than 83, it's radioactive, but if it's less than 83, it might be stable. It's hard to reverse any of the rules, so you have to reread them as is. But not the converse or anything like that. Yes? Oh, uh, the question was, 
Uh, how about for protons equal neutrons? If, if, if they're equal and it's less than z is 10 or less, yeah, if they're not equal, then it, it could be radioactive. So I guess it's that Okay, yeah. <laughs> Which of the other ones are reversible? Uh, if it doesn't match the periodic table, that's a problem. But you have to double check with all the other rules, too. Okay, so if I had to answer this question, would determine if the following isotopes are radioactive, I would guess the first, the second, the fourth, and the fifth are likely radioactive. And if anything's stable, it's the third one. Okay, any questions on this? Yes? What about hydrogen? It has a magic number, so. Hydrogen has a magic number, but remember the magic number is kind of lower on the list. When it's 10 or less of Z, protons equal neutrons are really important, and matching the periodic table is pretty important. Okay? Uh, magic number is a little lower, and then the even odd thing is a little lower in priority. Yes? Um, so the first rule, you have to say it again. Um, first rule, like 83? Uh huh. Correct. Oh, if for the first rule, Z is say greater than 83, it's going to be radioactive uh, even if it has a magic number. What the magic numbers usually do is make it slightly more, uh, slightly less radioactive. That's what magic numbers typically do. But magic numbers are a lower priority of the list. Anything else before we do the next one? Yes. I'm thinking that the first one might be radioactive because it doesn't match the periodic table. Well, it's beryllium 8 and the periodic table has beryllium 9. Do you see how? Yeah. Okay. Yes? We, we do have to do other materials soon. Yes. Oh, uh, the question is about not matching the periodic table. That's more important when it's less than 10, 10 or less. When it's above 10, all sorts of things are possible. So I just have to weigh everything together and then go with magic number. The magic number becomes more significant above 10, really. Of C. But um, lowish, I mean, it's one piece of material. Okay, let's take a look at the other one now. In this other example, you can help me out here, protons, neutrons. Uh, was it 10 protons? And then 8? Uh, what's sulfur? 16 and 16? Okay. Thorium, 90, and 146, and then barium, 56, and 67. Okay, so let's try these. Uh, what do we think of neon? Radioactive or stable? Probably radioactive because protons don't equal neutrons. Uh, sulfur. Uh, Sulfur uh, has one thing going for it uh, that it does match the periodic table. It does have two even numbers. So we'll see. We're trying to find the most stable. I, I'm just going to make a question mark here. Unsure, but seems nice. Let's double check with the other ones, though. What about C? Yeah, this is definitely radioactive because of the, this is bigger than 83. Uh, and then how about the last one? Uh, yeah, uh, possibly radioactive. Why did you say that? I have a even and an odd. Does it match the periodic table? No, not at all. That doesn't look good. If anything, it's this one. 
This is stable one. Okay, if anything. So what I'm going to do is I basically give you a list and you're going to pick the one you think is most likely stable. Again, there are rules of thumb, so it's hard to be really uh, anal about it. Any questions on this one? All right, we should really move on. Okay, for the sake of time, I'm going to start solving the first one. You can go ahead and do the others if you're still working. All right, uh, this one I have on the bottom, 92. On the right-hand side, uh, 16 minus 6, that's 10. This should be an 82. On the top, 238. On the left, on the right, 32 plus 0. So 238 minus 32. 206. That's left. Okay, there's the first one, which you could have written. And on the test, I'll be writing my like this just because it's easier. But you could have written it. Either way. All right, the next one. I have this californium and nitrogen going into dubnium and some mystery, who knows what. Uh, let's see, let's fill in the blanks here. 98, 7, dubnium is 105. Okay. 98 and 7 is, um, oh my gosh, 105, I think. Okay, 0. Two, oh my gosh, 249 and 15. That's like 264. Oh, so this would be a 4. What the heck is this? Yeah, it's actually 4 neutrons. There's nothing else that would have a 0 there. Okay, here, uh, uranium is 92. This is 0 and minus 1. So that has to be 239 here. And this is 93. What is this? Neptunium. Okay, any questions on any of those? Yes? Uh, the question, how do you get the uh, number of protons in the first problem? Number of protons in the first problem. 92 on the left? No, I don't know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 92 on the left, on the right. Uh, 2 times 8 is 16. Minus 6. That's 10 here. So 92 is 82 plus 10. Okay, yes? If it does not have a negative on the test or in life, it's an electron. Yeah. Now, they might put beta minus. Uh, but if I want positron, I better write a plus here or a plus one there. Take, if it just says beta, take it as an electron. Okay. Uh, this is tritium. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, you don't need the first sentence. Uh, you just need uh, the last couple here. So you have a sample of mass of tritium. Uh, the time is five years. And the decay constant, lambda, equals 0 0.0564 years. This is a first order rate law. Oh, uh, usually right hand. All right. Uh, which one are we solving for? N or N naught? N. What's N naught? One gram. That's what you start with when you enter the problem. Uh, e to the minus lambda 0 0.0564 per year times the time five years. Uh, I get 0.75 grams. Let's say this was worded slightly differently. Because somebody I think up at the top asked me about this. I could have said, zoom out so you can see the whole call. It could have said, Instead of said, suppose a sample of tritium had a mass of one gram, I could have said 25% uh, of it has decayed. So that means N over N naught is 75% left over. Does that make sense? 
So I could have said there's 75% left over. I could have said it's a fraction of 0.75. I could have said 25% is gone. Those are other ways to word the problem. All mean the same thing. So sometimes we're solving for the ratio of n over n naught. And this time we're just solving for n. Remember, n technically it means number of particles, but it could be anything. It could be grams, it could be disintegration per second, Curie, Becquerel, any sort of whatever goes in here, as long as n and n naught are the same unit. Okay? So this is, it really doesn't get harder or easier than this, it's just word, the wording of the problem. So if it feels confusing to you, make sure you're doing, do more examples so that you can catch, just kind of get used to some of the different wording. Otherwise, the solving technique is always the same. 